Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about this solid liquid extraction technique. The solid liquid extraction technique is also called as solid phase extraction technique. Extraction of a solid material, a component which is present in the solid matrix is called as solid phase extraction technique. In this video, we are discussing the what is the basic principle of solid extraction, solid liquid extraction technique and various types of solid liquid extraction techniques. So the principle involved in solid liquid extraction technique, the solid liquid extraction technique is also called as leaching. So what is mean by leaching? Leaching is nothing but transfer of, transfer of the components from the solid phase to liquid phase is called as leaching. So this is called as leaching and the main principle involved in the solid liquid extraction is mainly based on the differential solubility of the components in a solid matrix towards the liquid. In your solid matrix, the different components will be there. The different components are having different solubility towards the your liquid solvent. So we have to select the solvent in such a way to that the component should be dissolved in the selected solvent. So in this way, we can extract the desired component. The key steps involved in the solid liquid extraction is solubility of the components. So in your solid matrix, different components will be there. So what the what, which component you are going to separate that component should be dissolved in the your selected solvent you have to select the solvent like that after the selection of the solvent so when we add this solvent to your sample solution so this is your solid matrix which is having different components so this is x is the one different component and this another shape is called another different type of component so when we are adding the solvent to the your mixture so the desired component the analyte to be separated is distributed it is moving from the solid matrix to towards the your solvent so it will be try to dissolve in the your solvent and this is movement will be happening that is called as partition of the your solute or component in between the your solid phase and the your liquid solvent after some time the movement of the component from the your solid matrix to your liquid will be attain the one equilibrium the it is nothing but the concentration of the solute particle between the your solid matrix and your solvent is same so that is called as equilibrium after that the mass transfer will be happening mass transfer is nothing but movement of your sol component from solid matrix to your liquid solvent so these are the different steps involved in the your solid liquid extraction technique so first is solubility, partition, equilibrium, and mass transfer. So what are the different methods we are following in the solid liquid extraction technique or solid phase extraction technique? The first method is maceration, second method is decoction, and third method is percolation, and the fourth method is soxalate extraction. First, the maceration. The maceration, in this maceration, First, we are taking the one powder crude drug which containing more than one component or more than one solute. First, we have to take this crude drug and you have to place in a one container. And to this container, we have to add a suitable solvent and we can soak this crude drug at room temperature for at least three days. After adding the su suitable solvent, you have to seal the your container to avoid the prevent the evaporation and contamination from the any microbial attack. Three days is completed. So during these three days, what happened? The whatever the components present in the your crude drug, it will be dissolved in the your solvent. The solvent containing the dissolved component now we have to filter or separate 
the solvent from the your solid residue through the filtration process or by pressing so we are getting a one solution in this solution the desired component is there so we have to press the the solid residue dump so that time the solid residue dump material is called as mark so after pressing also we are getting some solution initially we got one solution and after pressing the solution you have to mix these two solutions and then we have to evaporate the your solution during the evaporation whatever the solvent is there is a solvent is evaporated and only the desired component is concentrated so this is the maceration in the maceration the advantages of this maceration is so this is the your schematic representation of maceration process so first take the a closed vessel to this you have to add the your menstrum after that you can wait for at least for 3 days and more and uh, maximum for 7 days and the liquid is strained off nothing but in the liquid the dissolved compounds are dissolved and the solid residues is there the solid residue is pressed the solid residue is called as mark after pressing we are getting the some liquid we have to uh, collect this liquid then you have to mix these two liquids and you have to filter that one and evaporate the solvent and upon evaporation we are getting the concentrated a solid desired separated compound or extracted compound so this is the principle and the procedure involved in the your maceration so what are the advantages so this is very very simple method and cost effective so we can easily can do without any training and without any uh, prior knowledge and it is a one versatile method but the disadvantage is it is a very time consuming process at least minimum 3 days and we are keeping for the maceration so it will be take so much of time and the extraction will take so much of time and in complete extraction how much amount of the component will be transfer from your crude drug to the your desired solvent <coughs> And the next disadvantage is risk of microbial contamination. So we are keeping this solution in the maceration for more than three days. There is a chance of the microbial contamination will be happen, and we are using the so much of solvent, so the solvent consumption is more. So these are the disadvantages of your maceration process. Next is percolation process. In the percolation process. so it is somewhat similar to your maceration process but we are using one apparatus that is called as percolator so this is the diagram of your percolator so in the percolator it will be like a one funnel separating funnel like of structure so in this we have to take the our solid ingredients so the solid crude drug we have to take here at the bottom of the percolator so prior to we have to uh, fill our pack this drug into the percolator first we have to mix in the your solid drug with the appropriate solvent and you have to soak your drug for 4 hours in the with your solvent in its container after that only you can add the soaked mix in drug into the percolator and above the percolator you have to keep even filter paper or add some amount of sand so above this one you have to add the suitable solvent we have to add suitable solvent the suitable solvent is called as menstrum now the mixture the entire this percolator keep aside for 24 hours so during this process the whatever the menstrum or solvent it will be try to move towards the your drug or crude drug in this the desired components are dissolved in the your menstrum and then it will be coming outside in this way the compound of interest is separated by using this extraction process so this is the percolation process it takes around 24 hours so the advantages of this one in the maceration it will be takes more than 3 days or 7 days but it takes less time than the maceration 
this extraction is useful for the thermoliable components only we are now we are maintaining the room temperature we are not heating we are not giving any excess temperatures here and this is suitable for the potent and costly drugs and it will be take short time and complete extraction will be happen compared to their maceration the disadvantage is it will be takes more time than the oxalation method more solvent is required to do this one one skilled person should be required so these are the disadvantages of your percolation process in the percolation process the particle size of the packed drug is also you have to consider for solubility of the drug in the suitable solvent next is decoction the decoction has nothing but so we are preparing our coffee or tea in the, our home so in the same way the decoction process will be there in decoction process first take a suitable vessel in the suitable vessel you have to add a specified volume of solvent nothing but water to this you have to add your crude drug and you have to heat for a specified time or defined time so during this time whatever the desired components present in your crude drug it will be dissolved in the water or your intended solvent after some time you have to filter the filtrate containing the filtered solution containing your suitable drug so after that you have to evaporate the solvent only the solid residue of desired component is concentrated in this technique we are heating the component so that's why this procedure is suitable for water soluble and heat stable components thermo stable components so we are boiling that one up to what extent we have to boil the water means 1 is to 4 1 by 4th of volume of your solvent should be remain up to that time you have to boil your solution in what ratio we have to take the drug and solvent means 1 is to 4 ratio or 1 is to 16 ratio so this is your decoction so the advantage is it is suitable for extraction of heat stable components and it is very cost effective method so no skilled person should be required it is easy to perform but the disadvantage of this one means heat sensed to components cannot extracted by using this decoction method next oxalate extraction method the oxalate extraction method is also called hot continuous extraction method as the name suggests hot continuous means continuously the extraction is happening with the help of the heating so that's why we are calling it hot continuous extraction technique in oxalate extraction technique we are using one operator that is called as oxalate operator so this is your oxalate operator in this oxalate operator we are having the one round bottom flask and one what condenser and the one oxalator or oxalate extractor so whatever the solvent you are using for extraction process you have to fill in the your reflex condens your rb flask so you have to fill the solvent in the rb flask so this rb flask will be connected with your oxalate extractor and above the oxalate extractor you have to fill with the condenser so you have to give some sudden temperature with the help of the some magnetic magnetic heaters are with the heating mantle so that time whatever the solvent present in the rb flask it will be converted into the some droplets now this droplets will be moving through the your extractor oxalate extractor in this oxalate extractor we are placing your crude drug your drug which containing desired component your crude drug which containing desired component so we have to wrap the drug the mixture of the component 
in the filter paper and this filter paper will be placed in the your auxiliary extractor so the position where we are placing the crude drug is called as thimble and at the side of the in the auxiliary extractor we are having two tubes narrow tubes will be there one is used for distillation path and another used called as siphon so when the solvent is heated the vapors of the solvent is moving through the your distillation path and through the your auxiliary extractor so when the vapors will be moving through the distillation path and it will be entered into the your condenser or reflex condenser now the vapors will be converted into again small small droplets now this droplets will be fall on to the your drug which is packed in the filter paper now the droplets were mixed with the your crude drug and based on the differential solubility the desired component will be dissolved in the your solvent and then again it will be fall into the your solvent which is present in the rb flask so this is continuously happening and after some time so in the auxiliary extractor the drug will be extracted drug will be appeared in the different color and when the entire the extractor will be filled with the your drug extracted solvent or extracting solvent then it will be coming through the your siphon tube into the your rb flask so you can do for a long time so after that you can remove your extractor and condenser and uh, rb flask so you can take your rb flask now now you have to evaporate the solvent by the rota evaporation process the solvent is evaporated only your drug is present here so this is the procedure involved in the your auxiliary extraction process so why we are calling this hot continuous extraction process means we are giving the some temperatures with the help of the temperatures we are doing this experiment and the continuously the solvent is converted into the droplets and the droplets will be fall onto the your drug and the drug will be dissolved and again it will be entered into the rb flask this continuous uh, thing will be happening so that's why we are calling it as continuous extraction process